The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. And Kraft, you know, makes the famous pasteurized processed cheese food, Velveeta. Velveeta has a wonderful cheddar cheese flavor that's rich yet delightfully mild. It's delicious. And it's the finest quality cheese food you can buy because it's made by Kraft, the name that for years has meant only the finest in cheese and cheese foods. Get a package or loaf of Velveeta tomorrow and enjoy the cheese food of top quality, Velveeta. Made only by Kraft. Well, it's late afternoon in Summerfield, and the great Gildersleeve just stopped next door to visit his niece, Marjorie. Incidentally, Marjorie's husband left the real estate business to take a job with a new plant in town, and being an ambitious young fellow, a lot of opportunities are coming his way. I'm glad you stopped by, Anki. Well, I hadn't seen you for a few days, my dear. Bronco phoned this afternoon, and he has good news from the plant. Oh? What is it? Well, he wanted to wait until he came home to tell me. He should be here any minute. What do you suppose Bronco's working up to now? Chairman of the board? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. He's always said someday he was going to bring me the moon. Oh, my goodness. I hope he doesn't try to bring it home on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's the most wonderful husband, Donkey. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm the luckiest girl in the world. <laughs> you kids have been married four years, and you're still up your ears in mush. Oh, there he is. I'll go meet him. Yeah, what a couple. Hi, Marge, honey. Hello, Bronco, darling. Ah, mm. uh, you. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Gellersley. Hello, Bronco. Oh, I didn't see you standing there. You kids can't see anybody but each other. I hear you have big news. Oh, yes, I can hardly wait. Yeah. Marge, how would you like to go to Paris? Paris? Paris, Texas? <laughs> no, Paris, France. Ooh la la. Oh, Bronco, do you mean it? Yeah, Paris in the spring. Tra la la la. Yeah, Bronco. Paris in the spring. Tra la la la. Bronco, yeah. stop dancing with yourself and tell us what this is all about. Well, it's like this. The president called me into his office today and said, Thompson, how would you like to be assistant to our branch manager in Paris? Oh, Bronco. Well. Yeah, and I said... When do we leave? I haven't a thing to wear. Yeah, and I said... Of course, I can get oodles of clothes in Paris, but before I leave, I'll need a couple of traveling suits and I'll need evening dresses for the dancers aboard ship. Marge, and... Marge, you haven't heard what I told the president. What did you tell him? Yeah, what did you tell him? I told him, I haven't a thing to wear. Oh. <laughs> Bronco Thompson, you did not. No. no, I told him I was honored and that I'd talk it over with my little wife. We've talked it over. Let's go. Oh, not so fast. Let's not start packing yet. No? No, we won't be going for at least two months. Two months? Well, it sounds like a wonderful opportunity, kids, but I hate to see you go. We'll miss you. Leroy, Bertie, all of us. I know, Anki. Oh, we aren't going permanently, Mr. Gildersleeve. It'll just be for a couple of years at the most. Oh, well, that won't be too bad. No, I think the experience will be good for me. <laughs> and then Bronco can come back and run of the, one of their plants over here, Anki. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh, oh look, Marge, I, uh, I bought a French-English dictionary today. It says here, um, a mortisseur. Hey, you know what that means? A mortisseur. Sounds like it has something to do with love. No. No, it means shock absorber. <laughs> now, there's a word you'll have a lot of use for. Well, I, I want to learn something about the language. I mean, I can't just go over there and make signs at everybody. And you can if you have money in your hand. No, oh, yeah, but I'm going to learn how to parlez vous francaise. Well, if you're that serious about it, I know just the person to teach you. My friend, Marie Olson. Oh, is she the Swedish girl, Anki? Yeah, but she speaks five languages. French, Italian, Spanish. Oh, she speaks all the romance languages, eh, Mr. Gildersleeve? 
You bet. <laughs> Even the way she speaks English is romantic. Well, do you think you can get her to teach Bronco, Anki? Oh, sure. I have quite a bit of influence with Marie. Oh, swell. Oh, will you give her a ring on the phone? Yeah, all right, but I'd much rather ring her doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll stop and see Peavy until time to pick up Bronco. You'll be surprised to know that Bronco and Marjorie may go to France. Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> on your way home from the office? No, I'm on my way to Marie Olson's. I'm taking Bronco with me. Is he your chaperone these days? <laughs> no, no, Marie's volunteered to give him French lessons. You see, Bronco's company wants him to go to Paris, Peavy. You don't change. You know Eager Beaver Bronco. He wants to learn the language right away. Could be a great opportunity for him. Well, when I was a younger man, I was given the opportunity to go to Paris. Oh? All expenses paid. Is that right? Mm -hmm. By the U.S. Army, World War I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't think you lived there. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, when I was in Paris, I lived. I'm here to tell you. Mademoiselle from Armentier's parley <laughs> Mademoiselle from You're Armentier's all right, parley I even got a letter from a French girl after I came home. You did? Perhaps I should go to Miss Olson's for French lessons myself. You, Peavy? I'd like to know what was in that letter. <laughs> you know Mrs. Peavy wouldn't let you do that. <laughs> You know, that would be more dangerous than World War I. <laughs> uh, by the way, has Marjorie met Miss Olson? No, no, she hasn't. I didn't think so. What do you mean, Peavy? Well, I was just wondering if she knew how attractive Miss Olson is. A lot of wives wouldn't want to run that risk, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, nonsense, Peavy. Marjorie's 100% for the lessons. She has no reason to be jealous. Well, sometimes a woman doesn't need a reason. What? Mrs. Peavy had no reason, but she was always jealous of me and Mary Pickford. <laughs> Mary Pickford? She caught me with Mary's picture. Did she send you a picture? No. One morning at breakfast, it dropped out of a cereal bar. <laughs> well, that couldn't have been serious. <laughs> That's what you think. Mrs. Peavy nearly shredded my wheat. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Peavy. Well, this is where Marie lives, Franco. Oh, nice neighborhood, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, it's quite a break for me, you're knowing a girl who speaks French. Yeah. And sometimes I think she'd like to talk turkey with me. Oh, she really likes you, huh, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, does a kitten like cream? Hello, Trockmorton. Yeah, I guess the kitten does. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Marie. Won't you come in? Thank you. Uh, Miss Olson, I want you to meet my niece's husband, Mr. Thompson. How do you do, Mr. Thompson? No, it's a pleasure meeting you, Miss Olson. You know, it's very nice of you to try to teach me a little French. Oh, when Trockmorton called me, I thought it a wonderful idea. Of course, Trockmorton always has wonderful ideas. Yeah, Marie. Don't start tossing me bouquets just because I happen to have good ideas. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve's a very accommodating fellow. Yeah, thank you, Bronco. Now, let's see. Where shall we begin? Oh, uh, before we start, Miss Olson, I, uh, I feel I should pay you for the lessons. Oh, goodness, no. It's a pleasure to help any relative of Trockmorton. Uh... <laughs> and now I'm certain you're anxious to begin, Mr. Thompson. Si vous voulez m'excuser, je vais chercher les notes que j'ai préparées pour votre première leçon. Uh, huh? <laughs> She's speaking French, Franco. Oh, I know, but what did she say? <laughs> I said, I'll get the notes I've prepared for your first lesson. Excusez-moi. Oh, yeah. Hey, Franco, that meant excuse me. How do you know? Well, she left the room, didn't she? <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, she has a beautiful speaking voice. Yeah, quite a girl. Yeah, I wonder if she'll have me talking like that. Uh, si vous voulez m'excuser, 
Je vais chercher la note. Mm. Bronco, tell him to hold the boat. You won't be ready in two months. <laughs> Yes, Marjorie, come in I thought I saw you come home Isn't it exciting, Anki? Just imagine, living in Paris Yeah, that'll be the life uh, Did you take Bronco over for his French lesson? Oh, yes, indeed I left him in Marie's capable hands Gee, it's wonderful of you to help him like this Oh, not at all, my dear Glad to do it Do you think he'll like French? Well, he's quite impressed with his teacher Oh, really? Oh, she has a lot of personality, Marjorie Very attractive girl Oh? And the minute she left the room, the first thing Bronco did was comment on her speaking voice. It's kind of musical, soft, caressing, you know. I'm not sure I do. Well, she's different from you, my dear. She's sort of a ja ja Gabor with a lot of ja. <laughs> she sounds very interesting. Oh, she is. A real woman of the world. Hello, Leroy. Hello, my boy. How's school? Only 48 days left. You sound as if you'll be glad when it's over. Are you kidding? When they ring that last bell, I'm not even going down the stairs. I'll zip right out the window like a canary out of a cage. Where's Bronco? Oh, I left him with Miss Olson. Hey, it's getting late. Marge, is the pretty French teacher keeping your husband after school? Oh, don't be silly. I'm not being silly. She's quite a dish, huh? Watch it, young man. <laughs> Let's not refer to Miss Olson as a dish. I'm just paying her a compliment. Have you seen her, Leroy? Yeah, man. <whistles> Leroy. That's a compliment. That's a compliment. You're all right. Well, Bronco should certainly be home by now. What are you worried about? You got him hooked. Who says I'm worried? Now, Leroy, let's not say things to upset Marjorie. I'm not upset. Why should I be upset? Uh, excuse me, Miss Gilfeed. Yes, Bertie? Oh, hello, Miss Marjorie. Hello, Bertie. I just want to know if all of us is going to be here for dinner. I got a big roast. You well. For all we know, Bronco may be eating out. Young man. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, Bertie, but we have to go as soon as Bronco comes from his French lesson. Oh, did he get started, Miss Olson, today? Well, he's anxious to learn. That's some teacher he's got. Red hair, green eyes, and a velvet voice. Bertie, you haven't even seen her. No, sir, but I talked to her over the phone. And what she's got comes over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> really, I don't know why we're spending so much time talking about Miss Olson. Yeah, Marjorie's right. Let's talk about something else, Leroy. Bertie. Oh, I didn't know she was a sore subject. Sorry, Miss Marjorie. Well, there's nothing to be sorry about. Hurry, old Pronton, tra-la-la-la. Well, Where here's Bronco. Oh, <laughs> Pronton, tra-la-la-la. Bronco, la. stop it. Oh, hi, Marge, honey. I was singing part of my French lesson. What are you going to be, a singing French waiter? <laughs> uh, Leroy, let me give you some advice. While you're in school, take French. It's safer than waiting until I get married. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? Tell him, Marge. Oh, come along, Bronco. Let's go home and I'll fix your dinner and... Unless you've already eaten. Well, what makes you think I've had dinner, Marge? Well, you're a little late. Do you know what time it is? I know it's time Bertie went to the kitchen. What? Oh, I didn't realize it was so late. Now, Miss Olson made the lesson so interesting, I didn't know what time it was. Oh, brother. Well, I'll tell you what time it is. It's time you gave up those ridiculous French lessons. Zeke, I'm glad I'm not in this. Yeah, but Marge, you thought it was a great idea. It wasn't my idea. It was Uncle Mort's. See, I am in it. <laughs> Marge, honey, how will I ever learn French? Let's stick to some plain English. You go home. Why, Marge? No, oh, Marjorie, if you take my advice... And that's the trouble. We took it. But... Couch now? <laughs> yes, yes. Bertie, let's have the roast. I thought we just had a roasted. <laughs> <laughs> what a family. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. What's that? Need menu planning help? Then you need Velveeta, Kraft's famous pasteurized processed cheese food. 
Smooth melting Velveeta is perfectly wonderful for cooking. Not only for omelets, souffles, and casseroles, but for a marvelous smooth cheese sauce, too. A glorious golden cheese sauce you can pour over seafood or vegetables or toast or serve any number of ways. And Velveeta sauce is easy to make in just a few minutes. All you do is melt a half pound of Velveeta in the top of the double boiler. You'll notice it melts quickly, smoothly, without any lumps. Then stir in a third of a cup of milk, a little at a time, season, and there it is. Try it. See for yourself how delicious it is, full of the fine, rich, yet mild cheddar cheese flavor that's made Velveeta so popular. You'll be glad to know that Velveeta makes this sauce truly nourishing, too. By two ounces of Velveeta, the amount you get in an average serving gives you more of milk's vital food values than a big eight-ounce glass of milk. Remember that, Mom, and make Velveeta your handy helper for serving all kinds of healthy, good-eating, hot main dishes. It's a special help now during Lent. Get a two-pound loaf of Velveeta tomorrow. Just be sure you see the name Velveeta on the package because Velveeta is the finest quality cheese food you can buy. Velveeta made only by Kraft. Well, things are usually quiet and peaceful around the great Gildersleeve's house, but last night there were some fireworks. When Gildersleeve arranged for Marjorie's husband to take French lessons from a very pretty girl, he got the book thrown at him. Bertie, I think Marjorie was very unreasonable about this. Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm neutral. <laughs> I know how you can settle the whole thing, Unc. Who is this, Leroy? Just go over and tell Marjorie how unreasonable she is. Leroy, you're just trying to stir things up again. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how Bronco's making out over there Bertie? Bertie's neutral Yeah, I know I was wondering if you'd care to slip over there for a cup of sugar And find out how things are I already been over there on the pretext of borrowing some eggs Oh? And about an hour after, I was over there pretending we was out of bread <laughs> How were things? Well, that's the first time Bertie ever saw icicles hanging in the house in April <laughs> hey, here comes Bronco now, sneaking in the back way That poor Mr. Bronco Of course, I'm neutral No, Mr. Gildersleeve? Hey, come in, Bronco Oh, hello, everybody Morning, Mr. Bronco Hi, sneaked out of the house, huh, Bronco? <laughs> no, no, no No, I just have something to discuss with Mr. Gildersleeve You're all right, Bronco Excuse me, I'm neutral anyway <laughs> Leroy? I'm gonna stay, I'm on your side hey. Young man, leave the field Okay, but if you get into trouble again, don't call me <laughs> That boy Well, Bronco, what's on your mind? I hope you don't feel I'm responsible for your little tip No, 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 it's not your fault Well, thank you Yeah, and Marge is getting over it Good Yeah, she got up five minutes early this morning Had my breakfast on the table and didn't even burn the toast Wonderful <laughs> What she had to say? Well... She didn't talk to me, but she didn't burn the toast. <laughs> well, that's a good sign. Well, the way I see it, Mr. Gildersleeve, marriage is a matter of give and take. Well, yes. And I've decided to give. <laughs> good boy. Yeah, next time I see Miss Olson, I'll just make some excuse for dropping the lessons. Oh, by George, I think you're right, Bronco. But I wouldn't wait. I'd get on the phone right now and call him off. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, I'll do it. Yes, sir. Clear it up once and for all. Oh, what's, uh, what's Miss Olson's number? Lilac 279. The lilac, eh? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, the clouds are beginning to roll away. You bet. La, 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 la. Unky. Oh, Marjorie, I didn't hear you come in. Unky, I'm so sorry about the way I behaved. You well. It was silly of me to give a second thought to Miss Olson. Hello? Uh, Miss Olson? Bronco Thompson! Has it started again? Hello, PB. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you today? PB, you can give me an aspirin and a swift kick. <laughs> Very well. I'll have to charge you for the aspirin, but the kick is on the house. 
What's the trouble, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, Marjorie's upset about Bronco taking French lessons from Marie Olson. She's letting her imagination run away with her. Now, was you afraid of that? Well, I've learned my lesson. From now on, I'm going to stay out of it. <laughs> well, I am. As it stands now, Marjorie blames me for the whole thing. Well, I can understand how a woman like Miss Olson could rock a man's boat. Yeah, but if Marjorie only knew how fond Marie is of me, she... Say, isn't that Marie out front? No, it isn't Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> hello, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Miss Olson. And Trockmorton. Hello, Marie. You're just a man I want to see. Mr. Thompson called me this morning. Yes, I know about that. He offered no explanation. Perhaps you can tell me what happened? Well, quite a few things have happened. <laughs> Did he decide not to go abroad? He almost had to leave last night. <laughs> I don't understand. As a matter of cold fact, Marie, my niece objected to Bronco taking lessons from you. Oh? A little jealousy, I believe. Too attractive a teacher. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you, well, Peavy warned me. He warned you about me? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I... What I mean is, uh, Mr. Peavy thinks you're pretty devastating. Why, Mr. Peavy, do you feel that way about me? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Peavy, you're blushing. Well, I, I feel like a little boy caught in a cookie jar. <laughs> oh, Mr. Peavy, I think you're devastating, too. Thank you. Hey, now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Trockmorton, you have me concerned. What can I do to make a friend of your niece? Well, I have a suggestion. I thought you weren't going to make any more suggestions. <laughs> if Marjorie's never met you, why not come out for an evening and we'll all get together? I think that would be wonderful. You bet. We'll clear the air. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve, but are you sure you're not blowing up another storm? Oh, Peavy, if your wife was jealous of Marie here, you know it would help if you brought her home and introduced her to Mrs. Peavy. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Miss Gilsey? Yes, Bertie? How's Miss Marjorie and Mr. Bronco getting along in the parlor? Well, things are pretty well patched up, but... I'm going to prove to Marjorie that Miss Olson's interested only in me. Yes, sir? Yeah, when Miss Olson comes, I'm going to make Marjorie think things are pretty serious between us. Miss Olson will like that. Right? I know she's had her eye on you for a long time. That comes over the phone, too. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not getting involved, Bertie. I'm too fast on my feet for that. Yes, sir? Yeah, I'm just doing this to impress Marjorie. Yes, sir? Yeah, i better join the kids. Miss Gilsey? Yes? I know you're fast on your feet, but don't stumble. <laughs> <laughs> Kitties, am I intruding? Not at all, Mr. Gildersleeve. Marge and I are still making up. Oh, Bronco, let's not talk about it anymore. When are you going for Miss Olson, Unky? Oh, she's coming in a cab. You're letting her come in a cab? Well, I haven't told you, Marjorie. But Marie and I are fairly close to an understanding. What do you mean? Well, I may pop the question one of these days. Yeah? Well, may I be the first to congratulate you? Now, now, wait a minute, Bronco. Oh, excuse me. That must be Marie. I'll let her in. Now, you see, Marge, she doesn't like me. She likes your uncle. <laughs> He's probably too old for you anyway. Marie, come in. Thank you, Truck Morton. Yeah, let me take your hand. You look lovely tonight, as usual. Thank you. She is attractive. No, just an ordinary type. Red hair, green eyes, good figure and an accent. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want you to meet Mr. Thompson's wife, my niece, Marjorie. I've been looking forward to this, Mrs. Thompson. How do you do, Miss Olson? Yeah, and of course you know Bronco. Uh, Mr. Thompson. Hello again, Mr. Thompson. Uh, Miss Olson? I've been anxious to have the little family meet you, Marie. My dear. I like to have everyone's approval. Why, Throckmorton. <laughs> well, Marie, suppose you sit over here on the couch by me. I'll be very happy to sit by you. 
Can you imagine Unky like this, Bronco? No, he's got it bad. <laughs> Marjorie, you look surprised. <laughs> but it just happens that Marie and I hit it off right from the start. <laughs> Didn't we, Marie? I found your uncle a delightful companion, Marjorie. Uh, may I call you Marjorie? Well, of course you may, Marie. I like that. Well, we're practically just one big happy family. We must do a lot of double dating together. <laughs> oh, it sounds like fun. Just as long as I have Throckmorton to myself some of the time. I'm getting in pretty deep here. <laughs> really, Bronco, I think we'd better go. What? Oh, oh, yeah. You no, know, no, no, not yet. It's early. Maybe it's late for them. Oh, yeah. Besides, you two lovebirds don't want to sit around with an old married couple like us. But, Bronco, please. Yeah, come on, Marge. <laughs> Good night, Miss Olson. Good night, Mr. Thompson. I wish you luck in Europe. Oh, thank you. She's very nice, Anki. I hope you'll be very happy. Yeah, but... Good night, Marie. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of each other. I hope so. Good night, Marjorie. They left in a hurry, didn't they? They were very discreet. And now that we're alone, you may begin where you left off, dear. Zeke, maybe I'd better catch a boat to Europe. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. What are you going to have for that fourth meal today? I mean, the late evening snack we all like to indulge in. How about some nice crispy crackers and Velveeta, Kraft's golden pasteurized processed cheese food? Sliced or spread on crackers or bread, Velveeta is delicious with a wonderful, rich, yet mild cheddar flavor. Velveeta gives you a wholesome snack, too, and a digestible one because Velveeta is digestible as milk itself. For perfect snacks, keep stock with the finest quality cheese food you can buy, Velveeta. <laughs> Folks, this is Gildersleeve again with some facts about cancer. It's an ugly word, but we have to face it. Because every two and one-third minutes, someone in the United States dies of cancer. It strikes in one of every two American homes. Now, these people aren't numbers on a chart. They're our neighbors, our friends, and our relatives. And no one knows who the next victim will be. That's why it's our personal responsibility, each one of us, to help science defeat cancer once and for all. The way we can help is to give generously to the American Cancer Society. So today, mail your contribution to cancer, care of your local post office. Thanks, and good night, folks. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Mary Lee Robb, Dick Crenna, Gladys Holland, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Easton saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Here's an idea for a brand new kind of soup. Soup you fix fast and easy. In the top of a double boiler, add a can of condensed tomato soup to an equal quantity of water. Then, when it's steaming hot, spoon in the contents of an 8-ounce jar of Kraft's Cheese Whiz and blend well. This Cheese Whiz tomato soup combination gives you the creamiest, most delightful tasting soup you've had in a long time. It's a wonderful main dish for lunch or supper, an exciting appetizer for dinner. Tomorrow, get tomato soup and Cheese Whiz, Kraft's pasteurized processed cheese spread. <laughs> Now play You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx on the NBC Radio Network.